Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Yes, this program has gotten a lot of reaction. And the spokesperson of the All Progressives Congress APC, uh, Presidential Campaign Council, and Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Professor Skeyamo, has petitioned the DSS asking the security outfit to arrest Mr. Peter Obi, a candidate of the Labour Party in the just concluded presidential election, and his running mate, Mr. Dati Baba Ahmed. The senior lawyer has also asked the DSS to arrest and prosecute Obi and his running mate over alleged incitement and treasonable felony in a petition addressed to the DG of the DSS, uh, which was uh, dated 23rd March. The minister opined that in a post-election period such as this, there is a need to soothe frayed nerves, lower the temperature, and begin the healing process. I'm being joined by Mr. Fessor Skayamo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Minister of State for Labour. Thank you so much indeed for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. And then, first of all, Ramadan Karim. Eh? To our Muslim oh, brothers. Our Muslim brothers and Absolutely, sisters. Yeah. They started the Ramadan. So let me begin by asking you, what prompted you, and in if you can be specific, there must be something that annoyed or angered you because you said you are doing this in your own personal capacity. You have written to the DSS, although the DSS has not granted your prayers. But what was it that uh, moved you to that point? Well, um, let me start by saying that in this post-election period, you know, campaigns are over. So normally we are torn between the extremes of, you know, going full conciliatory, you know, conciliatory in our tone or, you know, being as firm as possible, you know, in, in asserting our, our mandate and our rights, you know, to govern this country as given to us by majority of the voters. Now, we have been instructed by the president-elect and you saw it even in his open letter that, look, we should begin the healing process. So this combative tone of now we adopted during campaigns, you know, we ought to jettison all of that now and then begin to, you know, stretch our hands out to the opposition. Remember, the moment the results were announced, I was the first as the spokesperson of the campaign council to say, look, don't taunt them. They are patriots. They are brothers. They mean well for this country. It's just that, you know, perhaps the templates they sold to Nigerians were less attractive than, you know, was less attractive than us. And more Nigerians accepted us. But they are patriots. And that's the kind of language we want to see now. But then it appears too, and this is the point I want to make, that when you now have a mandate to defend, you have a right given, donated to you by Nigerians, and you become too condescending. You genuflect too much and you beg too much. It also conveys the feeling or the you know, uh, impression that you have stolen something and you are begging to be accepted. So that is also the danger of you know, the other extreme of becoming too conciliatory and all of that. So there must be a point at which you draw the line to say, look, I have appealed to you enough. For the sake of our country, let us come together. And I think that is the line that Peter Obi and Dati Ahmed, they have crossed. There is a constitutional process to address grievances. A process has taken place. An election has happened in accordance with the law. Results have been declared by the body constitutionally imbued with the right to declare that result, which is INEC, not any other body, INEC. INEC has declared a president elect. The constitution also envisages that certain persons will be dissatisfied with that declaration. So we are not in a position or situation of constitutional crisis like Dati Ahmed tried to, to paint. This situation was or has been envisaged by the constitution that certain persons will be dissatisfied. And if you are dissatisfied, they are laid down procedures to address those grievances so that democracy will function, those, con those institutions will function, and democracy will function and will survive. Now, what is going on is that Dati Ahmed comes here, and it has been a series of interviews by himself and Peter Obi. Yesterday was the final nail on the coffin. It was the final straw that broke the camel's back. That somebody who, wants, who wanted to become vice president of this country 
of that, 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 that level would come here, sit before the world, and tell the world that he does not recognize a president-elect that has been declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission, and that the president-elect must not be sworn in, and that he does not even re recognize you know, the process that they have you know, started you know, in court. He, has not, he does not trust that process, I mean. And that's the person who, want to become, who wanted to become vice president of this country. How? And then he arrogates him to himself the right or the power to interpret the Constitution, interpret, you know, Section 134 of the Constitution to suit his own whims and caprices, and then declares that what the INEC did was totally unconstitutional and that what will come in on May 29 will be an unconstitutional government. It is, it is the delusion of grandeur. It's complete delusion of grandeur for anybody to say now that there's no president-elect, which so, is uh, it's complete delusion so of grandeur. So that is the so, specifics of, yes, of uh, your anger. Exactly. Just to tell you that, that that amounts to subverting the very process that they have started in the tribunal, the tribunal. They are subverting that process by coming out of that process to then call for insurrection in a subliminal manner for protest and insurrection to truncate that process. I want to say this clearly, that the process we have established since 1999 is that elections take place. People are sworn into office, but those who have grievances are given the right to continue their grievances, to their, you know, air their grievances in court. And some months into their tenures, if the judgments come in, they are removed from office. So there is nothing so serious that he came to raise here yesterday about swearing in somebody who has been given a certificate return. Himself, Babat Dati Ahmed himself, was removed from office twice. He stole people's mandates. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying anything gross. It is judicial pronouncement that you stole a mandate. He was sworn in as a senator, was he not? He accused your party no, of but stealing. No, but hold on. But remember. he was sworn in. And I'm asking. Okay, let me finish. I'm asking. Let, you. let me finish this sentence. Yeah. He was sworn in as a senator. But the person who was challenging his victory continued his case in court. And under CPC, under the same Buhari that he's abusing now, he rode under his wings, reportedly won a Senate, a Senate seat in Kaduna, was sworn into office. Nobody, did, nobody said he shouldn't be sworn in at that time. But he was carrying a stolen mandate. And at the end of the day, there was judicial you know, pronouncement. And Baba that time was removed from office. Why is he opposed to that same procedure that he benefited from? In our own case, it is not an admission that our election was flawed, was, was totally flawed to the extent that it substantially affected you know, the result of the election. No. I'm not admitting that. I'm not saying that this is a procedure we have since established in 1999. So why? So you think that the election was now? flawed? Oh, what? You think that the election was flawed? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying that it was not flawed to the extent. But it of was flawed. No, it in some flawed. areas there were there were infractions in areas in the southeast. But the allegations are that in the southeast, that, that, in, that, the that, in the southeast there were flaws. That the in the southeast there were some flaws. That the victory of your party is yeah. illegitimate because they believe that there were a lot of voter suppression and in fact it's a stolen mandate. Who, Those who, are the words of of the opposition. Who has the right? And, who has the right to make that determination? You were asking him yesterday. Institutions must function. How can someone who is a, a participant in the process now arrogates on himself, on himself the right to be the judge and the jury and the accuser, and you are a participant in the process. In fact, yesterday I heard one of the strangest sentences I've heard as a lawyer. You know that sentence he came here to say, and I'm not surprised because he's not a lawyer, but he runs an institution. He said, this section of the concern the comes, comes interpreted. You heard that yesterday. That, no, 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 don't, don't, you don't need to bother. This section comes interpreted. I have never heard that in my life. What I have heard from my life as a law student is that the right to interpret provisions of the Constitution lies in the judiciary. And that's why you have a tripod. And I'd like to, you and I'd like, like you to, Let and I'd like to this. get your own interpretation. I mean, but just uh, before we get further into that's controversial section 134 because on this program, I've had to speak with a former NBA president, Olisa Agbakoba, 
who two or three months ago raised this matter and said it's going to be a problem and it's likely to cause a lot of chaos in our election because according to him it's not clearly stated whether or not fct has the constitution captured it but let me ask you what he said part of what he said and part of what the opposition has said is that when you tell people to go to court it then means something that you steal something from them and you are asking them to go through a process in which you are predetermined or you have your way around that process so just hang on. that is don't, one of the interpretations don't, 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 of go to court coming from your camp just hang on a minute if i don't say go to court what will i say it's a rhetorical question I'm asking you. If I don't say go to court, what would I say as a winner? But does he also say, mean that do, do I, you... Do I, will, I say, will I say come, let's fight? Does it mean that you predetermine the process? No, not predetermined. Thinking. I'm only asking you a rhetorical question that answers your question. If I don't say go to court, what it means, if I don't actually use that word, that sentence, is that avail yourself of the procedure of the, 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 the machinery for addressing your grievance as provided for by law. That is what it means. I'm only saying it in specific terms, go to court. If I don't say go to court, the next thing I will say is that, come, let's fight. So why are they saying, why are they using such phrases or such sentences in a derogatory manner? It is what is provided for by law. And people have actually retrieved their mandates by going to court. It is only when it does not favor you. And that is what the Labour Party is doing. And that is why I had to petition them to the DSS. They say build up to something that they are doing. They say build up. The build up they are doing is to rile the people up, pump them up, and then turn them against the judiciary that if your judgment does not go in a particular way. And that is why he has come here yesterday. He came here yesterday to say the constitution comes interpreted. What does that mean? He's telling the judiciary that this thing, I have interpreted it. The people of Nigeria have interpreted it, and if you say anything different, they will come after you. So what and is, so, no, yeah. no, I need to make this point. Yeah. I need to make this point. That is where they are going. And so, they are, they are setting up a scene for rebellion. And they are setting up a scene to blackmail the judiciary. And that is why, if you go online now, I have alerted the, they have alerted the DSS, that they have camped some boys in one popular hotel in Abuja. And I will give that information to the DSS, where they have told them every morning to be pumping out, you know, you know, uh, uh, online messages to rile up the citizens, cause fear, and all of that. And so, what they want to do is to say, once the judiciary now goes another way, then the judiciary must have sold out. So, and that's why they are threatening yeah. the judges. And they have gone up to that point. I want to make this point. Nigerians must know that the Labour Party online out now are threatening judges threatening their families exposing them go online and see what is happening and so there is a situation where they want to create fear in this country they try you know that during the elections they try to threaten people to support them they failed during the announcement they tried to threaten INEC. to so everything about them is threats to threaten INEC to support them they failed now they want to move to the judiciary it is enough is enough we are ready let me tell you this People who voted, the majority of that, who voted for Asiwaju and the APC, they are the silent majority now. And so if they think they want to push this country towards NSAS, where it was citizens, NSAS was a situation where citizens were dissatisfied with a policy of government, an institution of government called NSAS. That was, that was totally different, but they think they can, they can rile up and, you know, citizens towards a situation of SARS again, but and SARS. But this time, they should realize that this is not activity, it's, po it's pure politics. And if you want to do that now, it will not be citizens against government, it will be citizens, voters against voters. People who voted for the ruling party. You, you, you imagine so, that the, so, mandate, so, the mandate of your candidate and, and for your party, is it popular? So... I will ask you this question, a rhetoric question. Again. No, 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 I'm not supposed to answer it is, it is. I'm supposed to be asked. No, it's a rhetoric question that I used to answer you. That Peter Obi, with the kind of message he preached, did he expect in all honesty, a man who came third or saying the confessed, did he expect in all honesty to win in areas where that message did not you know, go down well with people? He was telling the churches, take back your country. Take back your country from where? Now, look at the heat map of the votes. Look at the Nigerian map. 
pick it up and look at the heat map of his boat. He, he succeeded in those areas where his messages sank in about Christians take back your country. He, 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 he forayed into the middle belt where Christians are predominant and ended there. He could not go further than that place. Look at the heat map. And so the heat map exactly reflected the kind of message he he, 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 you know, he, 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 he so, 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 so within so, the ambit so, of the law, I'll tell you this. You, within the I'll ambit of the law, if someone is hurt by a process and he lost out in the process and he thinks that he, that loss was illegitimate, it was, it was edged out illegitimately within the ambit of the law, does he not have the right under the law and the independence of mind to be able to speak out? Oh, there. But you don't say you don't recognize the a legitimate government that is treasonable felony what peter obi and dati ahmed are doing is treasonable felony and we must draw the line for them now that is your you. that is your interpretation no it is not it is because when, it see, is the god to, 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 to when, when you don't recognize a legitimate government that has gone through the process and it is legitimate and you say you don't recognize it, you want to live your own life it is it is treason and let me tell you this. That's how you interpret what, what it. What Peter court now what, say? Uh, what Peter uh, Obie? And they will, that is when they will defend themselves now. But you must be charged first. Do you understand me? You will be charged for that. You must be, you must, that's what I'm telling them to do. I'm not interpreting. They will charge them for that. Charge them and go and defend yourself. That's why the, that's, why that's you are the, calling on people to protest? That's the remit of to, the states to do this. Yes, that's why, I'm, that's why I've, I've submitted myself to process. Have I not? Did I come here to say I will go and harass them fiscally? I have, I have instituted, I'm, I'm a senior lawyer. I've instituted the process. I have started the process. And you see, what they are doing, let me tell you, they are living in a bubble of their own. Peter Obi, Dati, and his supporters, I'm saying this on air, they are living in their own bubble. They are not hearing the other voices of Nigerians who are saying, we hate your bigotry. We are not buying your message of Christian, Christian, uh, Christian votes. We are not buying your, mm. your tribalism. They are not hearing those voices. There are voices in this country. Say, so, no, hold on. There are voices in this country saying we don't like those messages. But they are not hearing those voices. They are living in the bubble of their own. And they will hear those voices very soon if they continue with this nonsense they are doing. Right. As from now on, it's going to be propaganda against propaganda. Word for word, we will meet them everywhere because as she what you has a mandate, he will defend. And we're prepared to defend that mandate. And you politicians are not afraid of burning this country with no, the manner in no. which you have described. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you why. If you want to, if you want to push your supporters to protest, it is only where you are popular you can protest. So you are going to be burning the areas where you are popular. Do you want to tell Obi that I can call us protesters in Kanu? We can you call up protesters right. in the kitty? Can you call up protesters in Ondo? Can you call up protesters in Bronu? Can you call up protesters in Jigao? Go and call them out now. Right. Where we are. You can only call up protesters where you, they are popular. So you'll be born in areas where you are popular. That is where you can born. Let me pause you for a moment. I will take, uh, we'll, uh, we'll pay some bills and we'll come back to the conversation. And I'd like to know your own interpretation of section 134 in also looking at section 229. These are some of the issues that have been raised yesterday and I get your reaction to those uh, issues. Stay with me, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's bring these news quickly to you about the activities of the People's Democratic Party and some disciplinary measures that have been taken. We understand now that the former governor of uh, Ekiti State and the former SGF, the former Senate President, uh, Pius Aim, alongside Governor Fayoshe, Professor uh, Itavaya, and Aslam Ali, you have been suspended by the People's Democratic Party, uh, Governor Autumn of uh, Benway State has been referred to the National Disciplinary Committee. We're getting more reactions on that and uh, on China's television news at 10 and more stories on that. Let's continue our conversation with Mr. Fessor Skeyamo. Thanks so much indeed for your time. Thank you. Let me take you to section 134. Uh, my guest yesterday was before, saying... Before I just go there, just for one second, you know, to, to mention this, that it's important we mention to Nigerians that there has been no time where the Labour Party has come up with alternative figures that they got from polling unit to polling unit. That is very important before we enter, dive in, you know, delve into section 134, that it is important to say that every, polling, uh, every party has polling agents in every unit. And so you must have obtained your own alternative figures different from what was obtained. So all of these claims that were rigged, that's important I mentioned that. 
people that we don't we don't finish the program without mentioning that to nigerians that the basis for all of these agitations is not even there at all there has been no alternative figures they are brought to Nigeria. So, so your, your, your party, are, you and have I, your own figures I, now. Absolutely. Because the PDP absolutely. yesterday said they are the figures. Yes. The Labour Party absolutely. yesterday on this program said they are their figures. Exactly. In fact, the PDP said so, they won by more than 4 million votes. No, that is uh, is comedy of the century. It's comedy. When, when you say 4 million, where did you get it from? That, where are your, where are your, where four are your million, tabulation? 4 million you see, of their votes were, you see, were, was you not reflected. You just read the news now, just now about pdp it has been crumb it's just like the, the case of pdp was that everybody saw it saw the accident that was waiting to happen but they did not see that accident it was an accident waiting to happen turn into straight into three even the small one that was left was also for that depleted by g5 how did you expect to win so for labor party coming back to labor party they just come up like ken babi by dati ahmed said yesterday all they have done since like uh, the PDP has done to, to just manufacture a figure that we won by this, is to just manufacture big emotive words to sway everybody to say the election was a sham, it's a disgrace, it's a disaster. These are just emotive words without tying them to factual evidence. And nobody is bought by all that again. What they just want to do, uh, Dati Ahmed and uh, the LV, is to pose as some kind of Rambo they have come to save Nigeria. That's what they are doing. But in they, all are, of, they are in all of these, thought, they have been designed, so they are, de they are determined to do anything either unethical or not to do to save Ayamo, Nigeria. In all they of these, rambles, they say, rambles. They've said that they, they, they have evidence. They are cunning, they they are cunning are, lying Mr. machines. Kayamo, they have said, the Labour Party said, they know that they won this election and uh, with a better margin and that they have their evidence and they are going to court to prove it. We are very happy with that. We are happy. It's because I am I'm, I'm in cabinet now that you will not see me appear on the first day in court. But after May 29, on May 30th, you will see me. I'm working with the team. You will see me in court. Be, the law is against my putting on my wig now as I'm cabinet. But I'm working with the team. So on May 30th, you are going to see me in my wig and gown in court. So I know the facts we have. I'm not going to reveal everything. And I'm very sure that I, have, I know the facts you have, we have. You have, seen the, uh, the we have, the you have seen the petitions. You have been seeing reactions. Of course. And not only the election matter. That in fact, there are matters that have been raised bordering on the capacity and the qualification of your candidate to even run for office in the first place. I don't want to impugn the judiciary here. Even though I would have used the word laughable. But it is important for me as a senior lawyer not to ridicule the judiciary. But uh, at the end of the day, like I said, I tweeted a few days ago, I said, I'm excited about this petition. Why am I excited? Because those issues we shouted and tried to explain to Nigerians during the elections, that these things were useless uh, allegations, you will hear from the judiciary, you will hear from their law lords loud and clear now when they give their judgment. And call me back. Keep this tape. Call me back after the judgment has been given. We all know law. We all know the law. Even the opposite side, they know too. Some of them have come to say first us now. Now we just do our work. They told me. Are you predetermining what will come no, out? No, no, I'm not thoughts. talking. I say that's why I say I will not impugn on them. But call me back after the judgment and say those simple issues we have tried and tried to explain Nigerians, they will be exposed. And I'm excited these things have been have been brought to their petition so that we can have final judicial determination of those issues. All right. You will now, see them. Let me take you to section 134, and I'd like to get your own reaction. So if you can put it on the screen. And this is what section 134, subsection 2. And it, I mean, clearly what it states about how an election of two or more people in an election for the presidential race will be determined. A candidate for an election to the office of president shall be deemed to have been duly elected where there being more than two candidates for the election. Hey, the first instance is that he has the highest number of votes cast at the election and the B part says he has not less than one quarter uh, of the votes cast at the election in each of at least two thirds of all the states in the federation and the federal capital territory, Abuja. That is where the controversy came Yeah. What is your own interpretation? You know, Sheryl, you want me to expose our briefs here now, but I'll give you a small expo, uh, because um, I, I, here I will not start arguing our case. But let me give you one small expo. Do you know what we call expo, you know, when we're in school? Now, there's what you call the spirit and the letters of the Constitution, or the letters and the spirit of the Constitution. There's also what you call the community reading, community reading of the provisions of any law. 
what has been long established in our laws is that the constitution and its provisions must, must, must not be read in isolation. These are, these are very elementary principles that all lawyers know. And I'm sure you know that too. Before we came already, you said I should not refer to you as a law student, but I must refer to you now. You must have heard that in your law class. That because there's a community it's, reading. Is that very still? You, you use that. <laughs> but I mean, it's your so intimidation you tactic. But you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't no, move you're, me. You're, you're, you're growing now. You're growing it now. doesn't move You're not intimidated me. again. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of you. Young, young lawyer. <laughs> and how intimidated you were. No, no. But thank God that you are older than you were before. <laughs> but please go ahead. All right, now. So, you know, now, so those are the two things I've told as a guide. So looking at section 134. One, there must be community reading. And there's what they call the spirit and letters of the constitution. First question to you. The constitution says everybody in Nigeria is equal for the law. There's equal rights before the law in Nigeria. That you cannot dispute. It's a, it's a, it's a standard, clear, settled provision of the constitution. Equality before the law. Secondly, if you say there's equality before the law, and you now say certain voters existing somewhere should now hold what they call the golden card to override all other states in the federation. Does that meet the spirit of the constitution to make everybody equal before the law? You are now making people resident in Abuja higher citizens over and above other citizens of Nigeria. That is what their own warped interpretation is taking us to. That there's a special set of voters in Nigeria. Unless you woo them to that point of 25, you cannot be president of Nigeria. Even if you get up to 36 states, 36 states, and you clear all, but Abuja will, dep will deprive you from becoming president of Nigeria. Is that kind of interpretation, does it accord with the spirit of the constitution? That is one. I'm not going deeply into the arguments. I'm only giving you peripheral arguments. But are Secondly, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to in, tell in you. This matter, Again, I'm so, going to come back. Yeah. Read section 134. In conjunction, like I said, consumption must be read as a community. Then, you know, document, document, you know. Read it in conjunction with 299. All right. Let's put up 299. Section 299. Put up 299. Which they have been hiding from Nigerians. Read them. So that's what 299. The provision of this constitution shall apply to the federal capital Abuja as it were one of the states of the federation. That's all. And accordingly, as that's if all. it were. That's so all. it means that. That's all. Does it mean that the constitution so what's it sees section 30, FCT if you, if you, as the 37th state? Exactly. All you just need to do when you read these two is that section 134, for the purpose of this, for the purpose of that section, it is an inclusive provision. A provision that, include, that tries to include Abuja amongst one of the states. In fact, to, to, understand, Abu, to understand 134 better, just remove the sentence and the FCT Abuja. People would have been asking, ah, if you say, if you call 25% in you know, two thirds of the states of the federation and you keep quiet, people would have been asking, ah, two thirds of the states and Abuja, I say, what about, what about Abuja? What about Abuja? So, what that last phrase means. It's just to confirm to people that you calculate Abuja along with it too. That's what it means. Simple. So, in practical terms, let me bring it down and break it down for Nigerians to understand. In practical terms, it means that if I need to score, I need to get 25% in 24 states, and I now get 25%, I get the 25% in 23 states, and the FCT, what it simply means is that FCT will be calculated as a state too, that you have met the requirement. Am I clear? That's in practical terms. That is what it means. I'm, I'm trying to calculate, you know, bring it in practical terms for people to understand. That if Asiwaju or Atiku had gotten 23 states, 25%, and they say, oh, you cannot be president. Or they say, no, but he got 25% in FCT too. Oh, yes, it's included. It should be treated as a state too. So what it means is not to elevate Abuja and to treat it separately as an elevated to a status higher than the state. In fact, their interpretation the interpretation that bring, they are bringing to section 134 is an interpretation that even negates the spirit and letters of that particular section that even tries to include Abuja among the states to be calculated. Now, the corollary to this is, is Washington, D.C. Go and look at the constitutional development of, Afri of America. Washington, D.C., you know, is not one of the federated states of America. It's a federal capital territory. Of and so before... And be fighting for statehood. Be exactly. Before 1961... 
The voters in America were not allowed to choose electors, which is the electoral college that determines Nigeria, uh, America's uh, 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 president now. But in 1961, I think it was by the 23rd Amendment of 1961, that they now brought you know, DC in and they said they can now choose, I think, three electors or so to now be, take part in the electoral college. So that is the meaning that they were, they were agitating to be treated as one of the other states. So our constitution, therefore, without waiting for that agitation, they adopted, what Section 134 did was to adopt the 23rd Amendment of the American Constitution. That's the meaning. We are going to go into it, you know, history when we, are, when we argue our case in court. It draws, its, it draws its strength from the 23rd Amendment of the American Constitution that says, treat D.C. as a state for the purpose right. of electors. Let that me, is what it draws it so, from. Me, so that is, yes, it is said. Yes. Uh, it might be dangerous for your candidate and the president-elect to be sworn in if there is no clarification and settlement on this provision of the Section 134. What other pathway do we have to douse this tension? There is no tension. The tension is in Baba Adati MS mind. Tension where? He wants to come to Ego Square or do what? What is he saying? What is Bati Ahmed saying? That what? That Lineup should have gone what? Should have stopped announcement to go to court first? If the line no, hold on. If the Lineup should have gone to court first, raised this issue. That, the, the, your, your it's, it's, it's like Bakoba Supreme Court. Your candidate did Why not. Why you, you quit quoting my no, very, very respected fellow? Hold yes, on. Hold but on. he has raised respected it. Respected fellow. Respected fellow. But is this Supreme Court? Did you hear views of other senior advocates too? He's my very good senior brother. But you keep going back to Oligarch. What, what is Oligarch? It's one of those who have raised it. Yeah, but the other issue, the other lawyers who have said is nothing. What them to now? Am I not a senior advocate? So what's the meaning of this? But the question is that, as it is, your so, candidate... So, so, so the I next should have Mr. waited, Kayamo, should have stopped down. announcement to go to court. Calm down, Mr. Kayamo. You did not, your candidate did not make 25% in FCT. Just like, just like... Uh, uh, the PDP candidate No, no, no. Too. Just like Labour Party don't make 25%. In more than 17 states too. In, 20, in fact, he didn't make 25% in 15 states. And now he wants to now rub shoulders with us that didn't make 25% in what? In FCT and the six other states. We got 30, you know, we got 30 states, you know that? The but, two of them, are, are Obi and Atiku did not even make the 24, and they are claiming to be, they want to be president. Obi was the worst. He got 17, 25% to 17. And even look at the national spread of the votes. So even say who who qualified to be president. Listen, by the manner of their campaigns, Obi made nine states in the south and made three in the north central. He didn't even go to the core north. Atiku Abubaka got nine states in the north and made three in the south. It was only Ashiwaju that got six in the north and six in the south. That is the balance that Ashiwaju brought to this, you know, to this uh, campaign. Again, it was only Ashiwaju that got at least one state in each of the, in, in all the, uh, in five, five geopolitical zones. It was only in the southeast Ashiwaju did not get one state, but Ashiwaju won at least one state in all the five geopolitical zones. Right. Again, Ashiwaju took first, came first in three regions and came second in three other regions. He never came third anywhere. Obi came first in only two regions. Atiku came first in only one region. So who had the spread? Who had the acceptability of Nigeria? Uh, your, your Those are the people that are waiting has, for them. Your candidate, perhaps, uh, from uh, analysts, to say, look, that is the uh, most, uh, that, that's the lowest margin or percentage of vote any pre person elected president has had the, since 1999. Democracy at that point it says that you don't have to have the highest vote in history. You also have the highest vote in that election. That is democracy. Mr. Professor Skyamo, senior advocate of Nigeria, Minister of State, for labor and a spokesperson of the APC PCC. Thank you so much indeed for your time to respond to. Thank you very much. Thank you so much indeed.